Hey, what's up, everyone? Upstar here with Rise Gaming, and today we're going to be starting a, uh, you know, playthrough and continuing Sands of Salazar, but this time with um, the Sultan character, which I've mentioned, you know, in the previous uh, episode, and that I wasn't sure if I was going to do this at the end of the playthrough with the Hashashin after you know the final battle, which apparently is the first, um, the first ending, and there is a true ending, and that's why the achievement says that you know there's a one. On it and then the other one has a two on it actually but anyways uh, we're gonna start it up with the Sultan so let's get to the character creation all right so here we are uh, so the Sultan is an easy class it's it's more of a town management class though you know it has everything else that most other classes would have you know the regular you know adventuring and stuff like that with extra responsibilities but it is an easy class according to this and difficulty some have normal some are you know like this one is unknown uh let's see that's easy as well normal 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 unknown unknown i think is difficult well that one says hard so i don't really understand what that would be if the unknown could be easy or could be hard depending on how you play it i guess anyways and this one has its own plot quest available uh, something to do with uh this tribe that you're taking over or that you're uh uh, what's the word that you are inheriting? You know the the sultan the, the, the sultanate. I think that's what they call it the sultanate. Yeah, right there um, From your father who died blah 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 and then there's a tribe that wants to fight you for some dumb shit that doesn't that don't, they that you guys have no clue about but they're they're blaming it on you and It's your responsibility. They're, they're basically trying to make you do their dirty work well, not dirty work. They this is making you fight, trying to fight something. And if not, they're gonna be. If not, if you don't find it, get it for them. They're gonna beat your ass. Well, at least they're gonna try. Anyways, we're um we can learn Arcana at, at the to the max level three Arcana Master. Uh, we have no trade permits. I don't know if any. I don't think all the other factions are enemies. I think they're just like neutral. Uh, specialty. Yeah, we uh, begin with small town. Construct buildings. Train up your troops. And, but we have to, just like any other character if you have like a if you're a leader of a faction or you're uh, you own a a what's it called um, a town or outpost or whatnot well obviously people can attack you and might you know try to take it over anyways and we our skills are um, this character is more like a ranged physical like archer type but there is some there is a skill in his skill set his uh, machina I think they're called Ancient Machina, um, but uh, that is one. Is, one says just attack, and another skill says magical attack. So I don't know if, the, he, yeah, if it's it's uh, the Sultan is a hybrid of physical ranged and magic ranged, or I don't know how that works. Anyways, let's go into the Sultan right here. So I've already explained the, how I have the 375 points. And the, I think the max that you can get uh, is another 60 points, 65. Uh, so that would bring us up to uh, 380 and then another 60, which would give us um, 440, I believe, something like that. That would be like the max max that I'm aware of. Then, you know, other stuff here, the difficulty, which I'm going to go into that so I can get extra points. I'm going to go into all troops right here so I can have extra uh, troop slots. I'm gonna go into these three as well, so I can get um, the max of the character slots after I have my talents uh, maxed out for that. Uh, we don't need that. That's a, that we're saved. We're being saved on a hundred points uh, with that because we are already we are already uh, Arcana Masters. Nothing there. We don't need that. We can just try to get recruit these as fast as possible. Uh, so there's no need to waste a hundred points on these. Oh, I don't know why Omar is the cheaper one, eighty. For skills, I'm gonna go. We can't obviously getting these are only for the nameless class. We're, I'm gonna go strength boost, dexterity, boost, charge, and berserk. Strength boost for strength gives us attack. I'm, I'm a, uh, I believe, and then there's this attack increase in percentage, which is good. And then we have an evade percentage, agility. I guess it's good for us. I don't know. I feel like it would be because we're technically ranged. You know archer type class uh, more strength here more agility there more strength here more agility there I don't really care for the skills that come with this berserk class uh, berserk uh, skill thing the charge one is, are, are the one I'm more um, 
uh, I, the one I care more about, the charging retreat, is kind of like a blink type thing, but not exactly, but it works uh, similar. Helps to get away since we're ranged, we, we don't want to be too close to the enemy, blah blah blah, so that works out. Then there's a brutal collision, which is kind of similar, so that works out as well. Leap is is not really something I like because I with the my previous experience with the soar skill, which is basically jumping as well, you can get knocked out of the air. I don't know if with charging, since you're not actually blinking from one location to another, like actual teleportation type thing. Um, you're 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 going you're crossing the distance between point A and point B, and this one you're just moving from point A to B instead of like without tra the transition in between. So I don't know if you can get hit there and knock back whatnot. I don't really understand much of that. But to avoid using yeah, since I'm already maxed out, um, I can't really go with anything else. That's basically it. Um, so that's that's what we're gonna go with. Hopefully we don't it, um, we don't come. It doesn't come to the point that we're like, oh, spirit is kind of like your thing, so you're going to have to go with that. And I'm like, oh, well, then I screwed up my character because I went full, you know, agility and strength instead of adding some spirit in there. Hopefully things go okay. Uh, so let's confirm that, I believe that's, yeah, I think it's right. Let me just recap on what I have to see, uh, make sure I got everything right on what I think is what I want to have. Okay, so... This is what we're gonna go with. I, I don't know. I just like that hair. I just like that face. Those eyes. The you know the face like that is what I like. So basically, uh, a character that looks basically the same as the, my other you know characters, my other char main character that we've already you know, done a playthrough of. Uh, but I decided to go with the the default Sultan body type that they give us. You know this robe thing with these like weird dagger looking things I don't know what they are really I really don't know they look like daggers to me but some weird type anyways um, we're not gonna since we're not being covered in the face this time with the, like that little mask thing uh, now we have this type of beard uh, I'm gonna go with that I don't like I, I, I've never been a fan of the mustache so I don't like the mustache I just like the beard and we're gonna go with this name rise and then s for Sultan same options. I would like to, to recruit the mythical stuff. I don't really care. I put that off even though I never used roll. I've never rolled. Even though sometimes I say I'll try it and I never do. It just doesn't feel like I need to. And uh, yeah, that I take that off because I don't like that. Sometimes I do get to the point where I'm at zero, at zero of food. And it's probably a, I don't want that. I don't want movement speed is, is a big deal here. Anyways. So here, let's see what it says. The minor tribes of the desert lands are numerous and your father just so happens to be the leader of one. Despite being heir to your tribal lands, you prefer the scent of adventure. It has been many years since you returned to your hometown. And then we're in the merchant's camp, the same old, same old, same old uh, intro of all the other characters nestled inside of, oh, at least the Hashashin, beyond lies the desert. So let's go into our party. Let's get some skills going because we have that increased difficulty. We might as well try to get something. I'm going to go with charge because charging retreat is probably the best choice of action for me right now. Uh, or maybe going directly into this right here. Throw a boomerang which flies. Well, I haven't I haven't tested that one out so why not? So let's go into that because we're going to have to go probably you know get everything in here before we get anything else. So because of the difficulty increase we are level 3. And we do have three skill points there. Uh, so I guess we'll go here. These are probably level requirements. Yeah, they have level requirements. So there's nothing else we can do there. So we have a skill at least for our first fight. And right here, I'm going to get Charging Retreat. Because of, you know, its ability to kind of like a blink type thing. But not exactly. So it works to escape from, you know, when you're in melee combat when you're not supposed to. And we can upgrade that immediately to do extra damage if we want to. And I guess I will. It's a passive skill. And we got more stuff unlocked, but that's all we can really do right now. And since we are a Sultan, we do have uh, extra slots. Um, we start with six. We're not a boss yet, so because technically we're still an adventurer. So we just have our... This, the, um, the six original, 
Plus I got five more? I don't know why I have 12 instead of 11. Maybe because I have... I don't understand this much, this one. Sultan plus six. Uh, I don't get that one very much, so I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Plus one every three levels, plus six every three. Maybe I just got a plus six. Didn't I get the plus five squad members with the... Huh. Let me take a look at that, because I supposedly I put the legacy points... Huh. Strange. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've done a lot of, you know, little tests here to see, you know, with the character creation to see what's up with the squad numbers. Um, I don't get it really because right here, okay, I understand, okay, I think I know, I understand what this is coming from, but I, there's something I don't understand from this. So the base number is six, um, and every three, so it's like th every like three, six, nine, I'm 12. I'm guessing that's when you would get, you know, your increase of this. That Sultan plus six part right there is what's confusing me because I am getting my plus five, but because I'm level three now, I'm getting an extra one. But it's weird because it says plus one every three levels, but then it says Sultan plus six. That's the one that's confusing me. So I don't know. Uh, since maybe I haven't become the Sultan yet, and that's why it's not giving me those six points. Yeah, I think that's probably the case. Okay, I was getting confused. So I do have my five points, uh, my five slots here, plus the one extra from that that level up. So the Sultan doesn't get plus six um, every three level ups. The Sultan only gets, uh, when you, you become a Sultan, you get a plus six. But then I don't know what the boss <laughs> one is about because then that's just straight up 16 points. I'm guessing a boss is from owning like a, a territory or a town. And in Sultan, if you actually make a faction, is that the case? I'm very confused, but that's I'm guessing that's going to be. We'll see later. So we are getting our five points. We start with six. Five points, we have 11, but we are a, a level three, so that's giving us one extra one. Okay. I was getting very, very confused with that. So now I think that's what's going on. So we have 12 points now. Once we become like the leader of that one nameless tribe, cause that's, what, that's basically what it's called. I, I don't know if it's, it's not going to be here because I'm loading in. Um, so we get a short bow, which means we're, that's the weapon we start with. Um, I think I tried already equipping something else with this some other time, uh, during a test or something, or during the other recording of the, uh, because there's a re-recording of one episode, of the first episode of the Sultan that I've already done, but with lesser legacy points, now we have more in this, in this one. And I think I couldn't equip anything other than the short bow, than a bow, is what I'm trying to say. So let's go over here, and we're going to start the main quest line over here, which is something I mentioned about that, I think, or maybe I cut that out, I don't remember. Um, it's basically the, you know, the starting of the main storyline with Malak and Isra getting chased by an Ifrit, and then we have to fight here, and, you know, all that stuff. So I have to, if I shift, then I can attack from here. So I don't know how the this boomerang thing works exactly. If they're out of the rain, if they're out of the the circle of that, or it's you know it's area of effect, they, maybe they don't get damage. I, I don't really know. Yeah, we're just gonna f fly through these this uh this dialogue here because we've we're, we've already seen that. We don't need to see it again, and I don't really care. So it's fine and goodbye. Can you go? We don't care about that. Yeah, that doesn't matter. We already know that. Uh, so caravan leader with the other characters, or as far as the Hashashin is is, uh, um, is concerned. <laughs> so uh, that's funny. It's funny because uh, the quest, the next quest was to become level three. We're already level three, and now it's already. We just waited like a little bit of hours, and now he, this is basically the continuation of the quest, which is funny. I don't care. I don't care about anyone. So can you just stop? Come on. Uh, anyways, what I was saying, uh, the caravan leader with the other ones, you can choose where to go. This one just takes you directly to your nameless tribe. There's nowhere in particular to go. So yeah, that's already been continued for us. So it says right here, at the end of the valley, I think, yeah, this, this is something special, um, more specific to this class. At the end of the valley, you see a caravan preparing to, the, to head out into the desert. The leader recognizes you and brings bad news. Your father had died in an accident. 
It is a strange feeling. You have been away for so many years without seeing him, and now you have to return to your clan to inherit the leadership. The caravan leader offers to take you back to the valley where your tribe is located, which is uh, above Twin Luna Valley. After a bumpy journey, you are back among your tribe's people, but before long, the leader of the neighboring Nemishi tribe, which is this bullshit tribe that, well, at least the leader, uh, stands at the entrance uh, to your a douchebag, that's what I was trying to say, uh, to your tent, flanked by his loyals. Rises, give up the epoch raid, please. Nemishi, you are simply shameless. My father's body is not yet cold, and you come barging into my tent like this? Have you already forgotten the kindness father showed to you and your tribe? This is for your own good. So he's saying he's trying to, you know, he's trying to be the victim here, or you know, trying to put the blame on us some way or some other or something like that. The forgotten epoch read of legend is such a priceless treasure. I couldn't possibly burden you with it. Yeah, there's basically something he wants. He has no clue how to get it, and for some reason, we're the ones that supposedly know how to get it. We have no clue about that. In reality, the epoch read is just a myth. You should know that. I'll give you a month to find it. If you can't surrender the epoch read next time we meet, I can't promise not to be angry. Yeah, so he's a douchebag. Uh, you know perfectly well that they are not kidding, but you really have no idea where the epoch read is. Not even your father knew, but they won't listen to reason. No, you realize that things might come to a clash uh, this time next month. Let us prepare for war. It's you! You're back! Do you still remember this old fool? It's me, your old consigliere, Wafa. Since your father passed, Nemishi and his curs have been hanging around looking for some foolish flower. Ah, he trashed us and trashed our homes when we were unable to produce it for him. Now the whole tribe has, has been ransacked and there's, there's only a few of us, a few dozen of us left. It's not actually a few dozen, we're only ten. Oh, young sultan in waiting, can you save us and our tribal honor? The, I... It's been twice that I've done this, and I've always gone with tell me what you need, because I feel like I don't care about the epoch read. But I, I don't know if I should ask. I don't feel I don't know if I'm gonna get a bad rep rep with this dude if I ask of that. Uh, you know, I've asked for this, like to give in, like acting like a weak, uh, sultan kind of thing, instead of, you know, actually. We'll go with this, and if it's something bad, I'll just re I'll just uh, go back in time, which is basically reloading my save and then coming back to this point. So let's ask about that and let's see what's ha what happens. I haven't heard anything about an Epoch Reed. He just hoped that you would come back one day, even if only for a day. To be blunt, he started growing haggard soon after you left and even used to cry out for you in his sleep some nights. Wafa finishes his word, and it takes all your strength and courage to prevent yourself from bursting into tears. Well, guess who's back now? I vowed to restore our tribe to its former glory. I vowed to never let my father down again. Wafa, do you have any suggestions for me? Tell me what it is you think I should do. My lord, the most important part of managing a tribe is maintaining numbers and vitality of our tribe's people. I suggest you focus on three key indicators for a healthy tribe. Max population, current population, and idle population. Then he says where it's at. Top right hand corner. Well, he doesn't say it. it's in parentheses. Our houses may have been ransacked by the Nemishi, but we still have our base. Rebuilding houses and res residences can help boost our max population. You have to bring back all kinds of foods to meet your population's needs. Uh, give me some food and I'll distribute it to our people. The more food we have, the more people will come and join with us. Spend food to increase your current population. Also increase idle population. I don't know if you actually have to keep food in the warehouse or if... um. Which is something we ha we need to figure out, or I'll, I guess I'll figure out sometime, and and at some point in time. Anyways, uh, or is it just like a currency to increase that? I, I'm not really sure. Anyways, also increases. If you get that, you obviously get this. But if you're using them, then no, you're not gonna have them, right? Available. It's not enough to rely on external food sources. We should also build up our own food security with farms and warehouses. We have some abandoned soil. Perhaps you can bring them back up to farm standard. If we want to build a barracks, a sawmill, a mine, or any other facilities, we'll need to put a permanent population to work. Let's allocate some tasks for our idle population. Hmm. Our tribal elders passed down ancient machina technology throughout the ages. We kept this in the library. 
which did not survive the Amishi attack, but the manuscripts certainly did. They're hidden inside and just need someone to put them all back together so we can recover the ancient technical knowledge for our, of our people. That's that's uh, they're telling this us uh, this now, but that's basically his um, the Sultan's skill set. If my lord wishes to recruit soldiers, why then you'll you'll have to be on good terms with the leaders of the other tribes. Once you have 30 favor and a local trade permit in your hands, they'll grant permission to recruit from their tribe. We can also study their plans to build our own similar barracks and train up our own crack troops. So that right there, uh, I'll get to it in a moment. There's, uh, I've, I'm still confused about it, but I'm, I have some theories about it now that I read that. Now that I pay attention to it in reality. I've read it before, but pay attention. I have some resources here that should last us for the time, for the time being. Your father also maintained good relations with the five big tribes, so at least they're neutral. Uh, so they wouldn't be too hostile towards us for now. But this world is unpredictable. Maintaining positive rela relations is important, as otherwise we'd be invaded by more than just an Amishi. I uh, actually, um, with my other post-game character, uh, while I was going around conquering all the tribes, um, I didn't touch the Akal for like because I was starting out in my corner with the Redstone Keep, Umbral uh, Cliffs, Crying Rock, and uh, you know other related places, and the desert. Um, the West Okana Desert was in the top right hand corner we were in the bottom left hand kind of thing so they were the last ones I actually touched and actually um, you, they uh, they decided to send me you know um, some sort of uh, request to, for an alliance if you do that if you accept that then you, they won't attack you you can't attack them because if you try to go to their places like that they um, own or whatnot um, it won't it won't give you the option to siege so you have to actually um, disband the alliance that you guys have either you or them if they want to attack you or if you want to attack them you have to wait like a day or something or some hours and because you sent you send a messenger and then you tell them oh it's off now well obviously you're gonna lose favorability blah 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 they may not go to war depending on how how high um, the reputation you had with them you won't lose all of it but you lose most of it anyways um, so maybe that can help you out for like for some particular tribes I'm like oh I don't want to fight with them or just as you can call a ceasefire as well I don't know for how long that lasts anyways I haven't tried that part mm, yeah go to the next thing we are all we are all rooting for you my lord make your plans carefully and lead us on the pathway back to glory and prosperity so now we have to name our tribe and I'll call him Arisen because that's the same one I've, I have I used uh, with our faction and with the post game character I don't know that's really the only thing it comes that comes to mind nothing I'm, I'm not really a fan of doing random names I, I I like particular my own made up names that I you know that I use so now Why did what does that say? What did, why did it say that? So we have a character quest. Yeah, that's what those are called. Character quests. Arisen's nameless tribe was occupied by me. Arisen lost control over nameless tribe. I don't know how I lose it if I become it. You know, I don't know. That's weird. Then the seer has listed you as a wanted criminal for making our own tribe. I guess going to intel. They're, uh, we're a wanted criminal, but we're not hot. We're not. They're not hostile to us. It's just uh, cold. The Deeb and the Thur seem to be the closest to us. Then the Dokken, then the Akal, and then the Seer. I don't really like the Nasir classes, I, as you guys probably noticed with my playthrough uh, previously. Uh, Akal, Dokken are my favorite, and Deeb. Uh, you know, I like their casters. The Thur. I didn't really ever look into them, so I can't really say that. Nas I just know that the Seer aren't really that great, at least not in my uh, opinion. Anyway, so let's go into here before it, things start getting out of hand because of the time. So if, I think we talk. I don't know who we talked to for the warehouse. Talk to Butler, the Butler Wafa population, exiling, uh, construct buildings. The tutorial, I guess. I don't want to do that. Want to remain my town? Rename my town. And warehouse, no worries. But if I talk to the chief, oh yeah, I think he gives us just like random quest type thing, right? 
Oh yeah, so I guess that dude does that. So Wafa is the warehouse manager here. And it's basically so you can store stuff. I don't know if they get stuff out of my warehouse if I were to throw food in there. Um, like for maintaining the population. I don't get that very much. It's still something I gotta you know figure out how that works. But it is it is a good place to store your stuff. If you're low on inventory, especially since if you start with the basic uh, or the default amount of of inventory, which is 60, if you don't get any, you know, you don't put any Serpa uh, points into Serpa, that's what it's called. Um, in the legacy, you kind of sort of got to go with that. Anyway, so and we have our own little merchant here to test to see what we've got. Um, I don't think we can. I th I think I tried this out and I couldn't put any um, equip anything else. I I thought I did. I mentioned it earlier, but now I'm I don't know why I'm second guessing myself. Anyways, buildings. So that's twin. That's the way to Twin Luna. We can't go out to the world map uh, while in this area. We have to actually go out towards the the uh, the actual you know default places in the map or to be able to do that so from here you won't be able to just something to uh, uh, make note of so just like the other places spots have particular a particular uh, a list of particular things that can be constructed on that slot on that spot and that's basically it I I don't think there's anything like even if you were to upgrade this I don't think that actually unlocks anything else in this spot because I'm guessing that one's just for Jade Camp and nothing else. This one for Mining Camp and nothing else. Something tells me that's the case. Uh, I guess the upgrading may is I think it tells me it's for the garrison stuff. Yeah, up, maybe yeah for so you can unlock upgrades for the um for particular buildings uh, and raise population cap. But I think it also raises how many squads or characters you can garrison or station at a particular you know this particular um at a particular town or outpost so over here we have for the small farm it costs utar 100 utar and 30 wood i don't i don't think that's a bad idea to start it says grows a small amount of food every week the, what i don't know what i'm unsure of is uh if that food comes to me or is it, if it goes into this warehouse, that's one thing. Because I already know that the money, wood, and, you know, these are all, like, resources that are not in your inventory. But food is a thing that does go in your inventory. So that's the thing that kind of, um, I wonder what that's about. So previously, I had already thought of what I wanted to put in four particular spots. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Because this one actually has to be a trading post, so that's, that's going to be that. I want to be able to recruit uh, dock and villagers, dock and youngsters, uh, deep farmers, and a call dweller. So I want one for each of those. So that would be two here, two there. I'm not. I don't like the the. I don't like the Nasir uh, upgrade or promotion line or class line or whatever you want to call it. I don't like that one. The Thurian camp is one I would have to like look into to see if there's something better than what the call. Because I like the call storm cavalry. I like those a lot. So I would have to see if th this has something better than that to offer. Anyways, so that's that's already something I decided. Oh, and by the way, if you're in this like window and you escape, you basically can get out of the entire thing, but then you're stuck with this menu unless you hit X right there. So we have to develop a tribe and fend off the, the Namishi. That's basically, we have a month to do that, and that's basically our first quest there. Um... Even though we have the main quest over here, and it's not being tracked. So it's kind of confusing when things are get off of that, even though it's just one quest. Because I think it should be able to like hold three quests. I think that's how many it would track at a time. Anyways, so let's go into buildings. Let's start with this small, small farm over here. I've already looked into everything else, but let's just, you know, recap. Obviously for you guys. Uh, shabby kennels. That's where you can put uh, beasts. To training, uh, that's what it says. Lock your beasts up at the kennels to train them, get some EXP, 
beast uh, exp increases at your as your kennel level improves mercenary camp uh, allows the recruitment of mercenaries and the increase of visiting troops training i don't like the mercenaries i think they're soup they're too weak a blacksmith so basically a repair shop uh, the thing is that i don't know how this would work i'm guessing it would have three levels this base level sec an advanced and a master level i'll just call them that because of the arcana um one through seven and then that's the basic and then the advance would be from seven to twelve or one through twelve i think it was for that the that blacksmith hammer the forge advanced forge tools to you know repair stuff equipment and um the ultimate one which was the one to, that was all levels i'm guessing that would be the thing i don't know if it'll cost money to do it um and i don't know if it'll be like certain amount of times per day or just one time per day or a certain amount of times per month or it's in unlimited so it just it's a building and that's it and there it is you can use it for free or i don't know cottage stables visit to gain a movement speed buff to all troops for two days uh, that one i don't feel that it's really that great um because two days is just too little if you're gonna go out you're probably gonna go far away uh anyways the good thing the thing i do like is this one arcane portal we'll, we'll get to the wooden century in a moment and that a uh, little more um, of theoretical stuff that i have in mind about that one um so this one the arcane portal transports you to any non-hostile city across the desert land i don't know if that is non-hostile does it mean like um do you have to be like in a ceasefire or an alliance with another tribe and you can transport to those places or it has to be something under your control that's not I, it, it could be either or and I'm not sure about that. We would have to test that out. Uh, the Wood Sentry provides a regulation patrol force for roaming near the nameless lands. Basically like security. Uh, but I don't know how many I should put of these. If I should put any at all. Uh, what else? This right here. The speed buff again. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to put more than one of these. And if the movement speed buff will stack. Or if it has like a cooldown. And if it does have the cooldown, how long is it? And if you if you put another one of these, will it have a shared cooldown? Or you can if one is on cooldown for let's say the speed buff is for two days, but the cooldown is three days, let's say. And you have another one of these somewhere else on another slot, would it be that that one is a, has a shared cooldown as the other, or is that one available? And you would be able to use that one while you know. You go back and forth between them using these speed buffs or if the speed buff stacks would be another question it says right here two days but if you get the other one will it increase to four days or would it increase the amount per i'm guessing it's going to be like a percentage of movement speed or maybe just plus 50 movement speed or something i don't know i don't, I don't really get that anyways that's mostly it for that part uh i think there's one uh, i hate when that happens there's one more that i think is different than that or maybe not the other ones are the base are the you know typical stuff logging camp mining trading posts you know this thing right here and there's one slot that i am very very confused about and that's this one right here i believe there's nothing on this list so i don't know if you unlock new things that's what confuses me about if there would be other things on this added, that could be added to this list, like the camel camp to recruit camels, or um, or camel units, uh, or the one for the scorpions from the from the dock in, that's com that's very confusing because of this. What it says, upgrade to build and upgrade more facilities. So yeah, that's something I'm I'm very confused about. Anyways, let's start with the small farm because you know we should probably go for getting food. Uh, this one right here, I didn't choose, I was gonna, I wanted to have these four, you know, camps around this place right here, just so I can have them here, but there was, I'm like, there's only three, I'm like, ah, and then there's only three over there, and I'm like, ah, where should I put this, and then that one you can't even put it on there, so I decided to go with these two, because you can actually put it on these three, uh, and these two over here, because that one's kind of hidden behind these trees, so I decided to go with small house on that one right there so now we only have oh apparently that small farm over there didn't require idle population to be 
uh, built. So that's going to be built without um, the need of that. So I can actually put something else maybe? That's weird. Let's look for another spot to put a uh, small farm over there. Small house over here. Okay. So any, I feel like any place that's going to tell me uh, to put a camp for recruitment like these, I might as well just go a small house. Unless there's going to be new things, you know, being unlocked. Then I would have to go back and then remove something and then figure out what I'm going to do with that. So we're just going to throw that in there and see if it lets me. Yes. So now we're, it still says idle five. And what if I get out of this option? It still says idle five, which is confusing to say the least. Okay, so ongoing projects, 3 max. Okay, so I can only do 3 max. Okay. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if only the farm is the one that's using the population right there to build. And the houses don't require it. They just require the time and... Yeah, I think that's the case. And the, and the, the, the resources. Anyways. So while we leave that to do its thing, let us just run out of the of our lands here nameless tribe lands what are they called it is called nameless tribe it just says area map nothing really else of interest so let's get get out over here and go to twin luna valley where we come out somewhere you know apparently our entrance to our you know our um, tribe lands are behind this treehouse type thing or inside there i don't know i don't know what that means now we have our main map over here and I have I have plans I was thinking about you know trying to conquer the entirety of Twin Luna Valley for myself uh, mainly actually uh, oh another thing I forgot to mention I'm just now remembering this uh, as you conquer the places the territory the, um, I just called it that because of that uh, that uh, other factions uh, control as you conquer them and if, if you conquer the last one that they have then you basically erase that faction from the map it takes it takes like a day or two or some hours or whatnot I don't remember how long it takes and then you erase them you don't erase the characters not e not like since the this is a Sultan particular to that that uh, faction you know, who's new? Uh, Bahat, Rebiya, and uh, Ludo Khan. Well, one more. And Ruha over here. Um, you don't erase them. They just go factionless. And you can recruit them. I don't know if you can recruit them prior to that and take them out of their faction. Or you have to destroy them and, you know, destroy their faction and basically eliminate it. And then you can recruit them into your, um, your onto your side. Anyways, that's just something I, I just recalled right now. And I think taking out factions would not is not a bad idea. That's what I was going for. Uh, um, what I was going to. The problem is that uh, the Nasir control Twin Luna Valley and Redstone Keep, and then there's that. that you know, these are the separate factions, and then they have one here and one there. So if I go, if I attack that one, these dudes are not gonna let me off, right? So I I would have to either control one and just face the wrath of the other. Or completely and totally take that and go over here and take that out. And then if someone else attacks it, just leave it there and don't even care. The, the reason for this is for is to uh, protect myself and our nameless... What is it called? Nameless Valley? It has a weird... I don't know if that's what it's called. Because of the overlapping other name of the Golden Bazaar. I think it's called Golden Nameless Valley. Anyways, um, that would like sort of keep our backs to the wall kind of thing is something I like to do I've mentioned before in other in other videos maybe not from this series this playthrough maybe from others but I've mentioned that keeping our backs to the wall kind of thing is probably not a bad idea anyways so that's gonna be all for this episode mainly just a little intro uh, to this character and how I'm gonna how I plan to uh, work it actually just one last thing I think yeah, party. It was party. Uh, going to the skills. This one is a skill that confuses me because this one says it's attack. So is that physical attack? I would guess so. 
But then if you go down to this one right here, right there, it's magic attack, it's firebomb, so I'm guessing that's more like magic. But you're not doing it. You command, as it says here, a siege chariot from the outside of the battlefield that throws fireballs. So I'm guessing you're there, they're attacking with magic. Like I said, it's kind of strange and like, okay, so are you just physical ranged? Are you magic ranged? Or are you both? So it just depends on what you want to specialize in in that case. But I already went agility and strength, so I'm basically a physical uh, a physical ranged attacker. Not really anything related with magic, but that's there. Anyways, what I'm going to continue doing, which, um, like I said, I just want to make this a quick playthrough, uh, max like five episodes. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna you know continue developing you know the the tribe the lands these uh these buildings here. Uh, I'm gonna see how I'm gonna do it to act so I can uh, you know raise up an army because I didn't like I don't like how the garrison thing works because you know you have these and it doesn't tell you the the complete amount of things that they require to recruit them because there's other uh, higher level things that you can get uh, eventually, but they it. They just say the initial, the first item on their list, let's say the requirements, uh, 150 Utar. But if it requires something else, it's not on the list. You're just going to have to see what, it's, what it requires because there's others that require wood, ironstone, maybe jade as well. And it doesn't show it there unless it's the first thing on the requirement list. Like in this case, the Utar for the farmer, that's going to be the only thing they require, I believe. But like for something more advanced, it's going to require, it says Utar 250. But then there's a hidden thing underneath that, you know, it doesn't show the entire thing. It sh it sh I believe it should have a tooltip that tells you the cost for that, the entire cost. And it says, okay, there's, an there's another cost uh, under that that says 100 wood or 50 ironstone, etc., etc. The thing is, I don't know how they would train here. And then let's say I train up an army myself over here in my units. And then I would send those in there. And then th those go there. And then now I have... A new let's say I'll take I'll put those in there and take this guy over here you know recruit that and put him over here now I have uh, some weak ass <laughs> unit there or squad and now I have to train that up um, I don't like that very much because because these do the ones that are stationed are just gonna be super weak so I, what I what I did or what I didn't do in my post game conquering character the Hashashin I did not put anything here. I, I, at first, I, I was starting to go and recruiting whatever was available there and just having them there. They have a weekly limit. They have to refresh how many you can get. Like maybe you can get three at a time, uh, three every week, and then it refreshes after seven days, and then you can recruit another three. And I'm like, ah, I don't like that. And it's still, it's not like they conquer it right away if there's no squads or characters defending. It's just they have the same time. Where, where there's like a siege bar right here where you have to wait like a day and it takes maybe it, like two minutes or a minute for the time for the bar to to complete before you go into combat you have that you basically have that same amount of time to arrive at you know wherever you want to go to defend it or whatnot if it's getting attacked so i don't feel a need to add, add any troops there unless it's something that's that you want to help you in your conquest or your defense or your uh, uh, defense uh, if it's not, if you're just gonna use whatever you have on you, like in your personal squad, then I feel like there's no need uh, to do that. So we we were at 12, right? And we have the 10 points from being a boss, but then I don't know what's up with those other six from Sultan. Sultan plus six. I don't get that part. Anyways, because right here it says we're a Sultan right there, right? We are. But we're not getting any extra stuff. We just got the 10, so now we're at 22. I don't know. Uh, I'm maybe it's either a bug or it's just uh, I'm getting confused about how, about how that works. Anyways, I'm gonna go with the same strategy. Uh, if I get a chance to do it, then I'm like, oh, I'll raise some warriors here and then I'll place them in the garrison uh, of the place here for defense. But I don't really feel like doing that. I don't. I feel like it's not very. It's not necessary unless you're fighting something super strong. Um, 
like the Ifrit are really really strong and I wouldn't even want to go up against them so you'd probably have to try to either max out a squad or get a, like squads at at least like level 20 or 30 or you know maxed out uh, in their promotion line or upgrade line and then have this maxed out with the garrison to be able to try to take on the Ifrit or just to make sure the Ifrit don't take you over but everyone else as long as you're maxed out you know you have your max characters all good and you have a good uh, good squad members um, I feel like it's not really necessary to have anything stationed there that's just my opinion right uh, every to each their own and that's gonna be all for now I'm gonna continue you know uh, you know increasing raising um, developing this tribe the town uh, putting small houses here and there and just trying to optimize the best I can you know in for uh, Maya in things like how I feel they're gonna be good in my opinion because like I said everyone has their own play through play style preferences whatnot and I'll, I'm just gonna go out explore do all this you know all these um, grinding stuff and I'll, I'll come back probably in the next one when I try to continue when maybe in a month when um, and I when, and I mean in game time uh, when the Namishi are gonna come and attack us so we have to prepare for that basically we're pre right now we're preparing for war so we have to get as many characters as we can and this and that uh, one last thing that I keep forgetting uh, this part right here uh, it says requires 20 plus idol population okay that's the first part but then also it says and the tribal support of the Dokken so I do have to become friendly with them and like I said in the that text the uh, uh, butler Wafa was telling us we need at least 30 reputation with them so I have to be friendly with the Dokken to be able to get those two with the Deeb to get that one and with the Akal Dwellers to get that one luckily I don't care about the Nasir so I, I am gonna attack Twin Luna's places and the Thurians are in um, uh, Umbra Cliffs so I don't really care about them but maybe it's better to keep a friendly relationship with all of them except for the Nasir uh, they can go you know F themselves over there somewhere with a tree branch you know these dry trees they can sit on that if they want to anyways uh, the weird thing was that sometimes they would say that you need to have base plus something that's the thing I don't understand what that means base plus base one plus and upgrading these I don't think that has anything to do with that anyways I'm gonna do all that on my own you know get all these things going and I'll see you next time like I said probably in a month when the enemies are gonna come so you can see what that character quest is about and see how things go so that's all for now thank you all for watching please subscribe if you want to see more hit that like button if you like the episode and i'll see you next time bye bye